Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this 104th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests on this episode include actor Tony Hale, has the family, action adventure series, The Mysterious Benedict Society on Disney+. Plus. It premiered on June 25th. We'll also visit with country singer and songwriter J.D. Shelburne about his new album, Straight From Kentucky, and his new single, Hometown In My Headlights. Of course, if you would, please take the time to subscribe, comment, leave some feedback, check out the shop, and share with your friends. Now, I can't tell if this woman is nuts, extremely patriotic, or just way too proud of her tractor. Could be all three. Rockwall, Texas is just outside of Dallas and had a big 4th of July parade this weekend and a 61-year-old woman named Lori Bostick wanted to be in the parade. She showed up to the staging area on her old, beat-up tractor with a bunch of American flags strapped to it. But they told her she couldn't take part, so she flipped out. She tried to join the parade anyway and there's a video of cops trying to stop her but she claimed she wasn't breaking any laws and floored it. Now, there were a bunch of kids around, but luckily she didn't hit anyone. Now, police were able to force her off the road, and she finally stopped after running over a chain-link fence. She's facing charges for disorderly conduct, criminal mischief, evading arrest, and interfering with a processional. All right, guys, promised you another very special guest and uh, got a new series on Disney Plus called Mysterious Benedict Society. We've got Tony Hale on the line with us. And uh, first off, Tony, always great to visit with you, my friend. Thanks for having me. So fun. Now, Tony, as uh, as we've all gone through what we've gone through this last couple of years, to have something new out there, and especially on a streaming service, I mean, how pandemic-related uh, does that go, right? You know, I know in the wild, the parallel that's, was so interesting shooting it was the show takes place with something called the emergency going on and it's kind of sending everybody into this fear and anxiety and I, I my character Mr. Benedict gathers these kids together to find the source and what I love is these kids don't kind of have magical powers but their superpowers their intellect their creativity and their empathy and it was so interesting doing this in the middle of a pandemic because it was like the world was going through a state of anxiety and everybody's trying to find the truth and the show talks about trying to find the truth. So it's pretty wild, really wild. And Tony, being on uh, Disney Plus right now, uh, the streaming services, I mean, how can you equate what they have meant to actors and creators, especially in, in the times we've been in? Yeah, I mean, we, man, this past year, just I think what, to give people kind of a, the entertainment and an escape, I know for me, I mean, I was, I was, shooting the show in Vancouver for five months and I couldn't come back and just the, I mean, the, the value of, of entertainment and even, I mean, I wouldn't even say kind of technology also because I used to kind of poo-poo technology like, oh, it's inviting us, it's isolating us. Man, FaceTime, I was able to FaceTime with my family twice a day. That just like saved our butts. So I'm very thankful for it. Now, if, if folks haven't seen the, the, the trailers, The Mysterious Benedict Society, tell our listeners just a little bit about what it was like for you to, to get into the character. And like you said, recording during the pandemic, did that make it a little bit more difficult for you, Tony? It was challenging. I mean, I was able to play one thing in the show is I told Mr. Benedict, but the, the, the source of this thing called the emergency is coming from my twin brother, Kurt. So I was able to play twin, which was really really cool and unique. Um, but it was, yeah, it was definitely uh, challenging shooting during the pandemic because I wasn't yeah, I wasn't able to come home, but I was very thankful not only to have the job, but to do something that I really believe in. And, and honestly, the actors, we're just a very small slice of this pie. Most of this pie is made of so many production designers and hair and makeup and camera and writing and just so many artists come together to do this. So it was a real gift to us all just to have that focus during kind of what was going on with the world. And Tony, as you had, everybody's had time to themselves over this last year. Was there anything that you really focused on, uh, on the craft in, in your time away? Um, I mean, that, I mean, I'm sure everybody's experienced this, but it, man, when something like this goes on in the world, it really kind of simplifies the life and just what matters. Um, so 
coming home, just being able to kind of focus on my family and friends, I was really grateful for that. But I actually got into, <laughs> I've never had a hobby, but I got into making rope bowls. Have you ever heard of these? I have. And it's like, and it's like I, my, this, this wonderful woman named Shauna gave me a, a rope bowl as a gift when I was shooting. And I just got obsessed with it. I started going on this like YouTube rabbit hole. And I bought a sewing machine, and I paint the rope, and I make these bowls. And it's just like my new... My wife won't let me make a career out of it. <laughs> but it's like, I'm just like completely obsessed with them. I, I give them to my friends, even if they don't want them. I don't care. I just give them to them. That's awesome. Now, Tony, aside from the series on Disney+, Plus, what what else can we look forward to in 2021? Um. Oh, man. Um, I'm excited to just, you know, see people's faces. <laughs> we were... We were uh, we were when we were shooting. It was wild because when we got there, obviously the whole crew was wearing masks because everybody's being safe, and and we didn't see their faces for five months. You know, like no one. And they actually gave me a book at the end of the show with each crew member. It was a picture of them with their mask and a picture of them without their mask. Because I, I had not seen their faces for five months, and so if I had seen these people at a grocery store without their mask, I wouldn't have known who they were. I just worked with them for five months. So I'm looking forward to seeing people's noses and mouths and the whole face. That's awesome. And again, uh, the the series, The Mysterious Benedict Society, you can check it out on Disney+. Plus. And Tony, I always want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can keep up with everything you've got going social media-wise as well, my friend. Oh, thanks. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Mr. Tony Hale is my, I guess the kids call it, the your handle, the tag or handle or whatever it's called. That's good stuff. Well, Tony, always great to visit with you, sir. I look forward to new episodes, and uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Definitely. Thanks for having me, man. Now, last month, Google Trends put out a list of the top five questions people had about sunburn cures. Now they did the same thing for sunblock. And here are the top five questions that we've been Googling about sunscreen this summer. Number one, how long does it last? Now, if you're talking shelf life, three years. Or if you mean how often to reapply, it's every two hours, especially if you're swimming. Number two, how does sunscreen work? Now, some of the chemicals in it reflect UV rays so they don't hit your skin. Now, other chemicals absorb them so your skin doesn't. Number three, is sunscreen bad for you? Now, there's been talk of a chemical called oxybenzone that might cause cancer, but there's not a lot of solid proof yet. Harvard recently did a blog post that said stats linking it to cancer could be skewed. They say people who wear a lot of sunblock might have a higher risk of cancer because they just spend more time in the sun, not because sunscreen is causing it. Number four, when was sunscreen invented? Chemists have been working on it since the 30s. A guy in Austria came up with one in 1938 that only had an SPF of 2. Then we had SPF 15 by the 70s, and the first waterproof sunblock hit stores in 1977. And what's the best sunscreen? That's number 5. Consumer Reports does an annual ranking, and this year's list includes the Walmart brand Equate Sport Lotion with an SPF of 50. They also say Hawaiian Tropic Sports Spray is good. Our next guest on the show, a friend of the show as well, J.D. Shelburne from uh, the big city right there in Louisville, Kentucky. And I, and I did say it right, J.D. I, I, I've got to show off my uh, my pronunciation chops this morning. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's actually several ways you can say Louisville. Louisville, but you, actually, you, you did well. Welcome. <laughs> now, J.D., new single out and about in 2021, nonetheless. I mean, did you ever think that uh, a new single was going to come? You know, we were going to do it last year, and then the pandemic hit. I'm like, I don't know if it's smart to put a single out when I couldn't really tour. I couldn't meet radio. And so we just sat on it for a while. I was able to go back in the studio and complete this new album I just put out. And so Hometown of My Headlights is a new single out right now. We shot the video down the road. And, uh, man, we're, we're excited. It's a summer jam. I think people are amping to get back out to live music and live concerts. And so uh, – we're just excited to, uh, I feel like I put it out at the same time, at the, at the right time. So uh, we're anxious to see what it does for us. Now you had a, a big CD release party and man alive. Talk about getting some, uh, some hometown love from, uh, from your fans. What, what was that like JD? 
It was uh, overwhelming. I'm from Taylorsville, Kentucky, which is right outside Louisville, about 25 minutes. And um, there's actually more dollar stores and stoplights in my town. I mean, it's a really small town. And um, we went back home uh, last weekend to celebrate the album release. And honestly, didn't have any any idea how many people would show up. We put the show on for free, raised about uh, 20 uh, about uh, 20 different sponsors helped us put on the show for free for the fans. So I wanted to do a show where, where fans didn't have to pay a dime to get in. So uh, about 10,000 people showed up, man. It was uh, it was overwhelming to say the le- to, to say the least. The weather was absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been a better night, man. It was just good to see people smiling, people without masks, just getting to some sense of normalcy back. And I actually caught a live clip of it uh, on NBC News, National News the other night. I actually caught my caught a picture from my show and used it as their uh, as a cameo. So I was like, wow, it was really <laughs> cool to see to see that get some nationwide exposure. Now, what is, what has been the driving inspiration for you this last year as we've had the time away has, have you really delved into to maybe songwriting or, or instrumentation? Well, you know, um, the pandemic uh, was definitely a break for me. I mean, I'm on the road about 200 dates a year. Um, what, what was kind of a blessing in disguise, my wife was pregnant through the entire pandemic with our first son. So it actually gave me a, ble- it was a blessing in disguise because it gave me time at home with her. Uh, we bought a new house during a pandemic, which was crazy. I don't know why you buy a house during a <laughs> pandemic, but we did. And, uh, but it gave me time to just relax and just kind of re-energize myself because I'm on the road. I'm, I'm just, I'm burning up the pavement every weekend on the road somewhere. And, but uh, I've got to say the fans have kept me going. I mean, I do Facebook lives every night, uh, meet fans from all over the country, really. Uh, playing songs, testing songs for my album, just anything from playing Uno with my wife at the kitchen table, anything to, to drive audience people, to audience numbers to my website and to my Facebook is really what kept us going. What was the most difficult part about the pandemic? Was that was it the Facebook lives getting used to those? And uh, obviously the fans got a little bit more used to the Facebook lives as time went on. And yeah, it actually got a little bit of response after a while, right? I did. I actually got over a million views uh, through the pandemic just on all my total videos. I would do a different theme a night. I do a Tom Petty night. I do an original night. I do a Matchbox 20 night, George Strait night. So I, I did different nights just to change it up so people wouldn't get the same old songs. And I would do different things. But uh, I got to say, the, the most disappointing part of, was, of the pandemic was um, 2020 was going to be the biggest year of my career. I was on the cover of my home state tourism guide. I was getting every county fair and festival known to mankind. And then I lost about 87 shows. So uh, as the weeks went on, I'd get these emails. Unfortunately, we're canceling our show. We're very sorry, but we had no choice. And so I lost a lot of money, um, as a lot of artists did. So that was probably the most disheartening part of the pandemic. But as as the months went on, I realized it was probably the best for my fans, for me, for our health. And so I just 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 dealt with it, you know, and, and just allow myself to take a break from the road. So I'm hoping most of those shows will come back. I have gotten several of them for this year and hopefully a few for next. But uh, it was it was very it was very hard to lose 86 shows. I'd worked so hard to get, and um, th- they weren't just bar gigs; they were festivals. So, uh, you know, once I got over the hump with that, I was I was fine. <laughs> once once you got past that, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, as as shows are opening back up, I mean, how different does the landscape look after a, a, a 16, 18 month kind of a pause, if you will? I feel like fans are happier. I mean, um, like I just did the show in my hometown. I saw people that I hadn't seen in my shows in years, family members that don't ever come out, friends that I never see on the road. I mean, it was just like I got a whole new uh, just a group of fans. And it's like I felt like people were just, you know, I've actually sold a lot of merch on my website this week, um, a lot of records and stuff. And like and I'm sending them to people that I never even heard of. And so that's a good sign to see people, new people coming out. I feel people are just more appreciative of your music. Um, you know, they're making posters and signs and it's just, I feel people are just getting to a sense of normalcy where they've missed for so long. And so, you know, this past weekend was, or the weekend before last was my hometown show. And that, that's where I really kind of noticed like just a, fr- just a fresh breath of air to walk on stage and see people screaming rather than a Facebook live in front of an empty room. <laughs> and, uh, but it, it was, it was great. And uh, we're on the road this weekend for our starting our summer tour at a County fair in Indiana. So I'm hoping for the same experience. You talk about it being different up on stage. I mean, how are you different coming up on stage after that time off? I get more nerves. I mean, I was really nervous at my hometown <laughs> show, I guess, because I was hoping people would show up because, you know, when you do a show in your hometown, you're not sure if they love you or hate you. <laughs> and it's like I had really had no, no idea really what to expect. And I mean, I knew it'd be we had sold out of VIP tickets for the pit about two months before the show. So I knew I was going to have at least 100 people there. <laughs> so it, that was a good feeling. But I got to tell you, man, I was nervous because. 
you know, some people commented and said, Hey, they're still scared of crowds. Sorry, we're going to miss it. Or, Hey, we're on vacation. I got so many friends say, man, we're on vacation. We're at cheerleading competitions in Nashville. We're going to miss your hometown show. And I, I got a lot of those. And I'm like, gosh, man, if I, if half of those showed up <laughs> that we're going to come it'd be packed. And so we ended up, I remember sitting in the bus that day after the show and just seeing people walking by the window to the concert venue all day long with chairs. I was, it was a good feeling. And, uh, it just felt good to see people again, man. It just, uh, it's almost like I'm a new artist again because it's like I I didn't tour for so long and I'm back on the I'm back in the saddle. It feels good. Now, how much different do your 2021 summer plans look after losing last summer, especially with the youngster, right? Yeah, you know, um, I, I'm not really sure. I mean, Amy, my wife, actually traveled with me to every show. She sold my merchandise and did odds and ends things we needed to be done. Well, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, now, if we take a bus to shows, I, I'll definitely bring them along, but uh, I'm sure they won't. I, I, don't, I don't think they like the, the Sprinter vans all that well. So, um, but um, I've definitely got to hire somebody else to sell merch. You know, that's going to be a, a different, uh, another expense on the road. Usually we hire a driver. So that's two more expenses I'm going to have. So uh, with him, you know, with Jax now, Jax is nine months, but, you know, we have taken him on the road. We played Vegas uh, about a month ago. We did four nights in Vegas. Uh, that was really our first show back on the road. Uh, he came, so he, they just kind of hung out the pool in the hotel room all day. So uh, we've ta- we've taken him on the road. He does well on the road, but it's my wife who I, you know, I don't have her help anymore. So I'll have to adjust to that, but hopefully it'll be fine. He does good on the road. She doesn't. Is that what, is that what I heard? <laughs> that don't make sense, does it? You think it'd be the opposite way around. So <laughs> Now now tell us uh, the, the, the single, the album, to have new music out there in front of people and the, and the feedback that you're getting from folks with new music. Man, it's just, uh, it's been overwhelming to say the least. I put the album out. Um, I recorded it all in 19 and then mostly in 2020 during the pandemic. I added four more songs. So it allowed me to spend more time at the studio, my producer, write some more songs and write with some hit writers. And so I uh, put this out um, on the, uh, the 25th. So it went to number nine on the iTunes country chart and for no label and, uh, and no, no manager. I mean, I do all this on my own. I mean, that, that was a, it was a proud moment for me to, to, to you know, to chart top 10. Um, so you know, I've been doing this independence to move to Nashville. So, uh, that was a big moment. And then, um, you know, just, you know, people magazine featured the video and did a story on my career chase of, you know, where I started, how far I've come and really I've done it mostly on my own. And, and with fans, I built fans the old fashioned way. And I feel like at the end of the day, um, you know, they really helped me get to, uh, you know, just to, to build tour day, tour dates and, and get big shows. So we're going to, we're doing, we're actually going to do a lot of festivals this year. We're opening for ZZ top uh, next weekend. Oh, nice. <laughs> so, uh, you know, now it's just getting on radio, man. So we're, we're, we appreciate you having us on and, and help get the name out. Now, who are, who are the favorite you talk about opening for ZZ top? Who are the ones that, I mean, I know you've got a list of, of your favorites that you've opened up for who were, who were some of the favorites that you've gotten to work alongside? I think some of the nicest that treated us was uh, Steve Warner was really, um, was really nice. Uh, and he ended up, ended up inviting me to the Opry um, after we opened it up for him. And uh, another one was um, um, the Kentucky Headhunters were, were big were big favorites of ours. They, they treated us well. Uh, but most everybody we've opened for has done pretty well, except for a few. There's been a few that hasn't really given us the time of the day. And, but, you know, that's just part of it. You know, I, I understand that. I've been in this business long enough that there's – there's a lot of nice artists and there's a lot of rude ones and you just got to take the, take it with a grain of salt. But uh, I tell you an artist that that's, I've never opened for that's treated me with more respect and has been nice sharing my stuff. And, and it's Oak Ridge boys. They have done so much for me uh, and just, have just been um, just mentors and have shared my stuff on socials, have given me quotes, um, have called me, have text. I mean, they've just been super nice. And to be hall of fame members and Grammy nominated artists, is just oh, mind blowing. Yeah, they were they were my very first concert that I ever went to, and about wow. seven years ago, I got the chance to finally sit down and interview them. And yeah, it, it, it's like you said, uh, you, you know, you you put them up on this pedestal, and you think uh, there's no way anybody can, can can strive to reach that, and they go above and beyond that. That's for sure. A hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, for Hall of Fame members, Grand Ole Opry members, I mean, they're they're getting pulled in every direction you can think of. I'm sure, but they still they still make you feel welcome. And I think that's the most important part. I'll always remember that. Um, and, you know, I'm just thankful for, for artists like them that, that help artists like me that's trying to trying to get a big break uh, to help. You know, it's, it's great to have their their uh, the response and their feedback. Has everybody had the time off this last year? I love delving in and finding. Did you find any new inspirations, maybe melodically or, or musically, maybe a different sound that, uh, that 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 tweaked your ear in the time off? You know, I, uh, I listened to a lot of music during the pandemic. I, I actually dove back into 1990s country, and um, I would play George Strait, Tim McGraw, 
some of the old stuff uh, in the '90s, I listened to on my, uh, you know, playlist mowing the yard or working on my or, or out washing my car or, or doing anything around the house. I, we spent so much time, but I, I got to tell you, I watched more Netflix uh, <laughs> that that you know seven months or whatever it was than I had in my life, and it's just like I just found that I just was lazy. I'm like I just sit and watch TV all the time, and I, mean, I did write songs and stuff, but and you know I was constantly getting in front of my fans on lives or some way and somehow, but but you know you know we. Uh, we actually, I exercised a lot and just did little things that I normally probably wouldn't have done. And, uh, and most of it was spent my, with my wife. I mean, we, we spent a lot of time walking she was pregnant a lot of times. So I'd have to motivate her to get out and walk a little bit here and there. And, but like I said, we watched more Netflix than I could ever even tell you about. I mean, it was just, it was just crazy, but yeah, we enjoyed it. Now, what was the, what was your biggest binge? Gosh, that's a good question. Um, probably, uh, hmm. I want to say snack food, but no, not really. <laughs> so, I, gosh, I don't know, man. I mean, I gotta say, we watched uh, uh, we watched a lot of uh, like the Ozark Netflix, and like we watched it every single day. And so we would finish dinner and watch it at two hours every night. It was a series, and so we sat down and we, we watched that for my gosh, as long as I could even until it was over. Until I guess they're gonna bring back the last episode or something. So. But we did that a lot, man. But as long as my wife don't make me watch chick flicks, I'm okay. <laughs> Life is good, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, 100%. 100%. Now, J.D., if, if folks want to uh, to find more info about the, about the album, about the single, the video, social media, all that, where's the best place for folks to keep up with you, brother? I like I like to send people to my website, uh, jdshelburn.com. You can Google J.D. Shelburne. It'll bring the website right up. Even if you spell it wrong, it'll still get there. So uh, we encourage people to download my record. It's called Straight From Kentucky. It's got 11 songs. It's my best album out of Nashville. I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in this album and money. So I'd love to see you guys download the record. Uh, the song's called Hometown in My Headlights. We shot the video at this little drive-in down the road, and uh, it's just been a great response. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to get back to country radio and, and I think 2021 is going to be my best year yet. Uh, we've got about 40 tour dates. Love to see the fans out at those. You'll find more about those on my website. So uh, check out jdshelburn.com. Easy enough. Uh, man, you make it easy on us, JD. <laughs> <laughs> I try to. Well, brother, it's it's always great to see you. Uh, I appreciate you taking some time out, brother. I love the new single. And, uh, Thank you. Brother, hopefully we can catch up again real soon. You too, man. Thanks for all the support through the years, man. Appreciate you taking a, a shot at artists like me. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Now, are you a more laid-back parent than your own parents were? Well, someone talked to a 1,000 people with kids under 16 and a 1,000 parents with children over 30. And here are the top five old-school parenting rules we used to enforce. Number one, respect your elders. Number two, you don't always get everything you want. Number three, kids have to do chores. Number four, you have to sit down and eat together as a family. And number five, you have to behave, especially in public. Now here are the five most common parenting techniques today. Number one, positive reinforcement instead of punishing them for bad stuff. Number two, giving them room to learn from their mistakes. Number three, giving them space to be playful and silly. 73% of parents today say they try to be more playful than strict. Number four, doing your best to connect with them. That's compared with just 37% of older parents who said they tried to be friends with their kids. And number five, helping them identify their feelings and process them. Well, thanks again for joining us for this 104th episode in season two of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, question, anything else you'd like to know, hit me up on the contact page at gqwithcam.com. Be sure also to check out on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook at GQ with Cam. Would like to say thanks to our good friend Brandon Allen for coming up with our theme music. We're going to let him play us out and hope you guys have a great rest of your Tuesday. <music>